So I know that this is a video that's going to come somewhat out of left field, right? Like it's not the most relevant question in our news or politics right now, but this is something that you guys have been bombarding me with over the past few months. And I think this is a question that basically every conservative YouTuber fr frequently gets asked, which is, hey man, who do you prefer to be the Republican nominee in 2024, Donald Trump or Ron DeSantis? The reason I'm making this video is because I know in the past I've given somewhat of like a conflicted mixed answer on this question. And that's genuinely because I actually have had pretty mixed, conflicted feelings on this, but I'm here to say no more, right? I've thought this through. I think I've thought this through in a somewhat more meaningful way that maybe you haven't kind of heard these arguments before. And I'm here to finally close the book, reach the final verdict, and explain to you why I am now a strong supporter of Donald Trump being our nominee in 2024 over Ron DeSantis, okay? And I'm gonna tell you why. Now, I will say to the DeSantis fans that this video is not going to contain probably arguments, you know, um, against the Santas that you've probably heard before, you know, because I, I will actually grant you that uh, I think a lot of the sort of cases that are made against the Santas don't really hold up that well. For example, what arguments do you usually hear as to why DeSantis shouldn't be our guy? Well, it's things like, uh, well, DeSantis, you know, went to an Ivy League school and he's an elite which is true, but you know, the same exact thing is true of Donald Trump. Or you could also say, and this is something you probably hear more often, is like, why should we trust DeSantis when DeSantis has gotten the endorsement of a lot of bad faith, neocon, Bush era Republicans, which is certainly true, but again, I'd argue the same exact thing could be said about Donald Trump. Neither are good, but you're, it, it, I would argue in many ways you're kind of comparing two sides of the same coin. I fully understand that Ron DeSantis is a guy who kind of comes from the Republican establishment and is therefore harder to trust. But I think you could also equally make the case that over the past few years, maybe not in terms of his soul or his character, but at least politically speaking, Donald Trump himself also is a guy in many ways that seems somewhat compromised, right? Like I. I think you and I both, sometimes we look at this guy, sometimes we look at the things Trump is doing or saying, and we wonder if he even remembers what he got elected on in the first place, right? We wonder if, he's, if, if the old Trump is even still there or if Jared Kushner and all these other bad faith people, Lindsey Graham, you know, this and that, have gotten to his head so much that he genuinely seems to forget what got him elected in the first place. I fully understand those arguments. I, I acknowledge that. And I think there actually is a case to be made that Donald Trump, at least partially speaking, is pretty politically compromised by the neocons. With that being said, why do I say that Trump should be our guy over DeSantis? Well, I would actually say my arguments um, for Trump and not DeSantis actually rest less so on Ron DeSantis's weaknesses and more so Ron DeSantis's strengths as compared to Trump's strengths. And that's to say, if you're a Ron DeSantis guy, let me ask you, what is your main argument for Ron DeSantis? I know what it is. It's effectiveness, right? That's why you want Ron DeSantis to be our guy, because he's effective. He's not much of a talker, but he's a very good doer. And when you look at his legislative record down here in Florida, overall, it's been pretty solid. Like he's shown kind of this ability to actually get stuff done. Like I understand the E-Verify bill was kind of toothless. The big tech bill was extremely toothless, but overall he's had a pretty good legislative record here. And he's kind of shown as this guy to be this guy who could actually achieve legislative victory. Whereas I understand under, under the Trump presidency, you know, the divided government, really all four years, not just two years, we had a, a divided government, made it very hard to for Trump to really get anything done. I understand that frustration, but I will say, Ron DeSantis' legislative effectiveness is actually a case against sending him to the federal government. It is actually a case to keep him here in Florida. Why is that? Well, let's just consider reality. Let's just, let's just be honest about the situation. What would actually happen if we sent Ron DeSantis to the presidency? Like Donald Trump, he would deal with a divided government for X, Y, Z, how many years, probably the vast majority of his presidency. And in the long term speaking, he would be compromised. He would get caught up in the same exact gridlock of the federal government that basically Trump and really, frankly, most presidents get stuck up in. And my question is, why exactly should we trade that for keeping him at the state level where I understand the Florida State House or the Florida State Senate more, more particularly is full of a lot of rhinos, but at least we have sort of party control and, tr and DeSantis has more ability to work with like soft Republicans than he does totally hard left partisan Democrat congressmen. And really zoom out for a second, right? Really, I, I think let, let's, let's, let's do this. Okay, let's, let's really make the argument like this. Take Trump or DeSantis out of the picture for a second. Politically speaking, if conservatives really want to create meaningful change and retake this country over the next one, two to three decades, it actually starts, I would argue, at the state level. 
not the federal level. And that's to say, you know, the reality of the situation is I think state politics has a, a much more impact on your life than federal politics ever could. And that's to say, what do you notice a bigger difference in your life? Like you, you show up somewhere and you're like, what, what, what feels more politically different? Trump being president versus Biden being president or living in California versus living in Florida? I, as someone who has done both and experienced both, I can certainly tell you that the latter feels much more significant and you see a much bigger change on that level. And that's again to say, you know, imagine if every red state or at least the vast majority of red states had someone like Ron DeSantis, if not far better than Ron DeSantis, as their governor. Imagine actually how different your country would feel and you would actually perceive your country. And imagine how actually politically speaking, in terms of laws, in terms of policies, like actually in tangible ways, imagine how different the United States would be versus, you know, sending Donald Trump to the, uh, sending like Ron DeSantis or whatever to the presidency and then, you know, them not really getting anything done. This is the big problem I think we have. We as conservatives have a tendency to look big, right? We always look at, at federal politics. Oh, who's going to run for president? This is the most important thing ever. And it's like, I get it. I get it, you know? And, and I'm not saying federal politics doesn't matter because of course it does. But, you know, I know it feels very good to win a presidential election and to have your guy win the presidential election. But the reality is that is going to change your life far, far less. And it's going to really, I would argue, actually changed the country far, far less than who is the governors in these red states. And the, the, the reality of the situation is we have a problem when it comes to governors. I mean, we have a, you know, you know we have a serious problem when someone like Greg Abbott is like arguably a top five, if not top three governor in the entire country. Like, you know the Republican Party has, has, has problems at that level. All these Republican states, you look at maps of most Republican states, most Republican states have crappy governors. I mean, it's people like Doug Ducey, Brian Kemp, Asa Hutchinson, or as I, as I call him, Ass Hutchinson, right? This is kind of the standard when it comes to Republican governors. And I would argue that's the biggest hindrance to the situation. And so now circling back, huh, circling back, circling back to DeSantis versus Trump, I think it has to be our model over the next few decades that we need to stop sending our most like politically effective, legislatively savvy people, like like are, are people who are really good at getting stuff done, getting legislation done. We need to stop sending those people to the federal government. You know, like I get it. You know, we have the the conservative firebrand. Like, let's send them to Congress. Let's send them to the presidency, where they can talk a big game. But because of the reality of divided government, because of Democrats holding one chamber of government or the other, are not going to be able to get much stuff done, right? Imagine if we actually kept those people in these states, kept these people in states like Florida, Texas, Arizona, Georgia, and we put the doers and the people who are very good at doing, kept them at levels where they can actually get stuff done and impact meaningful legislation. Imagine how different, how, how, how much better that would be. And that's why I say this needs to be our strategy. If we want to be serious about reclaiming the country, we need to set the standard that, you know what, people like Ron DeSantis, who are not the most charismatic, not really the, the best like cold of personality type of people, but are very effective, these people are destined for the state level. Then, of course, compare that to someone like Donald Trump, right? If the argument, you know, Donald Trump is not someone who is, like, the best politician necessarily, but he's a firebrand, right? He's a really good, like, maybe not the best politician, a great leader, right? And he's the clear leader. He's kind of like the cold of personality in a way, right, of this political movement. I think when you really consider this, that is the type of person that you want to be at the federal level, right? Because it's the reality situation, no matter who, who, the, who, pres who the president is, Trump, DeSantis, whoever, it's gonna be really hard to get stuff done. But I would argue that what presidents really do is they serve as cultural and sort of political icons, right? The elections of presidents sort of, um, I guess serve as mandates for certain like cultural political movements that ultimately do make a di big difference. You look at so something like the election of Ronald Reagan, right? And you kind of look at Reagan's legislative record. He actually got gridlocked on a lot of the things he wanted to do throughout his presidency, but that election like validated fusionism and it started this whole like, you know, uh, fusionist conservative revolution, you know, the Reagan revolution of the 1980s that brought conservatism up into this meaningful, or at least his definition of conservatism, up into this meaningful political force. Like that's what presidents do. And so I think my model, and I think what should be the serious model of, of our country over the next few decades as conservatives should be, put someone like Donald Trump, 
who is a very good political leader, kind of a good icon and kind of a, a good guy that kind of represents all of this, put him at the federal level. Allow him to sort of be the leader, kind of kind of the the the, the bull charge, right, of MAGA, of America first, of, of like this new populist revolution. But keep our keep our effective guys like Ron DeSantis and you know other people like him. Keep those people who kind of down at the state level, kind of as followers of Trump, who are actually getting the stuff done. And while Trump, you know, God bless him, doing his best, gets stuck in the gridlock of federal government, we have our people, our guys, and our very best guys, our very most competent guys when it comes to legislation, down here at the state level, getting shit done. That really is my argument for Donald Trump 2024. I have been so blackpilled on the state of federal politics. I've realized how like gridlocked and meaningless federal politics are to the point where I'm like, okay, federal politics are basically just symbolic, right? And, and they're not symbolic in insignificant ways, but you know, cause it's very symbolic and representative and, and really charges the ideas of who the president is. But that's what it is at the end of the day, symbolic. Someone like Donald Trump may not get as much done as president as Ron DeSantis might, but the difference is kind of null as compared to the fact that Donald Trump will encourage the, the election and, and, and sort of the, the, the political push of a lot of like America first right wing political organizations. He will um, encourage a lot of like America first guys to run for state legislature, run for state governor, stuff like this. Like he will be the leader of the movement and he can be effective leader of the movement from the Oval Office. Whereas you consider a guy like Ron DeSantis, how would he be as president? Right? He might get like one or two more bills done than Trump, but will he be leading kind of this, this, this sort of uprising, this kind of broad scale march through our state governments, through our, our, our political institutions that Donald Trump is able to do as sort of that charismatic leader at the center of everything? No, it's just not. And I understand, you know, it, it might feel better to have one or two more bills done here and there, but if we want to think long term, Want to think long term, we need, like, yeah, the presidency is kind of useless at the end of the day, but we need the momentum of Trump to remain with us and sort of the energy of Trump to remain with us if we want to, A, march through the institutions, and B, really get people in here at the state governments to the point where you may have an outline. Like, this should be the end goal. The end goal should not be controlling the presidency for 12 years or 16 years. Sure, that'd be great, but the real end goal should be, I want to see a map of all the red states, you know, running up and down the middle of the country and through through the southeast and stuff like that, right? I want to see this red map of just solid DeSantis at the minimum, even better at the maximum style Republican governors all across the country. And at that point, how much do federal politics really matter? I mean, especially considering, yeah, living in California sucks. It's going to suck even if Trump is president. But you have this vast majority of red states where life is actually good and things are actually good. And, you know, that may even form the preliminary map for secession. Okay, that's, that's, a, that's a joke. That's a uh, Kidding, kidding. I would never suggest such a thing. Would I? I don't know. But, you know, you, you understand what I'm saying? This is more meaningful. This is more impactful, you know. Um... Everyone wants to move to Florida for a reason, and to a lesser extent, even Texas for a reason, right? And, you know, if you're someone like me who has moved in the past few years, you can definitely attest to the fact state politics matter more than federal politics when it comes to your life, like the actual things that affect your life, the policies you have to live under. So again, that's the case to be made. We need this model. Let Trump lead. Let Trump lead with ideas. Like, ignore federal legislation. Let Trump lead with the ideas. Let Trump lead with the energy. And let people like Ron DeSantis, who are very effective, keep them down there. Right? Keep them down there. And honestly, let me actually say this too. I do think we need people who are kind of good firebrands in Congress too, because we need, you know, we also need uh, that sort of uh, MAGA, America First Revolution to kind of be seen in Congress. But also consider this. We definitely also need to keep some of our more effective, like legislatively savvy people, keep them at state legislature too. Don't run them for Congress necessarily. This approach to politics is one that is serious, right? It is not one that is just short term, oh, we elect Trump in 2024, we're gonna save the country, of course not. But we really think long term and we think the big picture, which I think is what we have to do. Understand this approach really makes the most sense, you know? So let me know what you think. That basically sums it up. You know, that, that, that's really my case for it. Maybe you haven't heard that case before, right? Because I'm not, this is not a case to say DeSantis is bad or he's crooked or whatever. I, like, no, I just think you really consider this and, and you, you, you really think about politics critically and what we want done in the long term, not just the feeling of uh, winning a presidential election, but over the next few decades, what kind of country do you want your children to grow up in? I think the case is pretty clear. 
keep people like Ron DeSantis at the state level who are not that charismatic, can't lead a movement, but are effective, keep them at the state level, keep people like Trump who may not actually be as effective, but are very charismatic and very kind of, uh, very kind of fiery and energetic, put those people at the federal level and we can literally get everything done and the people at the federal level can energize that push at the state level. Consider it, you know, Ron DeSantis wouldn't exist without Trump energy. If you want to create more Ron DeSantis's, you need that Trump as an energy at the presidency. Just something to think about. All right. Anyways, guys, with that being said, thank you very much for watching. Um, be sure to like and subscribe on the video and be sure to become a member. All right. Join our memberships. Members only Q and A's coming out sometime this week, probably coming out tomorrow or Thursday. So I'll see you guys then. Have a good day. Alpha moves only and peace. Hey guys, hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to like and subscribe and be sure to click some of the stuff on my left for some more awesome content. Also to follow me on social media, check out my podcast and some more awesome stuff. Be sure to check out the links down in my description. All right, peace.